before we had this on Mythbusters, our our camera car was a minivan that I would just be hanging out the back of with the camera <laughs> on my shoulder, you know, with one hand on the on the van so I didn't fall out. Um, this is uh, much nicer. Hey everybody, it's Jamie. One of the things that surprised us when we started shooting the show was that the crew, who have watched us build all sorts of things over the years, have often acquired a taste for doing that themselves. And one in particular, Scott Sorensen, decided to build himself a camera control rig to mount on a chase car, which incidentally was a leftover cop car from one of our experiments. And so I and Bimba helped him design this rig and mount it to his car. It works really well. We're about to demo it. Hey, Scott. Hey, Norm. How's it going? Good, good. Good to wow. see you. Thanks for having us out here. So this is it. This is your chase car. Yeah, this is it. This is kind of, uh, it's like a Mythbusters version of a chase car anyway. So what is a chase car for people out there who don't know? Is it? Uh, well, so it'd be a vehicle that you can film out of. It's a filming platform. So you could film like car to car or get some nice tracking shots, nice and stable and remote. And some of those spectacular shots people out there may have seen in, on Mythbusters in the final season. Yeah, uh, the, the final episode actually, we got to use this car to kind of document the destruction on the Alameda runway. It's an incredible shot. I'd love for you to help me walk through exactly how that shot was captured. Well, so this camera here, this is the Blackmagic Ursa 4.6K. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful little camera. And I see it's mounted to the DJI Ronin. That's familiar. Yeah. It's a three axis stabilizing gimbal that you have remote control on. Yeah. And then you can get monitor and video out. But that's all the equipment I recognize. Okay. Everything from here looks specialized. So yeah. what is the Ronin itself attached to? Okay, so the Ronin is, itself is attached to this vibration plate, which helps absorb some of the bumps and uh, shock uh, as you're driving down the road. And then that is mounted to this sled, which I kind of co-designed with uh, one of the engineers at Bimba. Ah. So this goes up and down on this track and it's controlled by this uh, Bimba air piston here. So it's air powered? It's all air powered. All compressed air. Yeah. And so this sled here, it's like a, like a vertical dolly. You have yeah. what, about eight feet of movement? About eight feet, yeah. This is, um, it's essentially like a forklift. I like it because I'm not worried if I'm driving down the road, I'm not gonna like hit it on anything. Um, like if you had like a big arm car, uh, which are very standard in Hollywood, you know, you need a big crew for that because you don't want to like swing the arm out and hit a lamp or mm -hmm. something. It's, it's kind of dangerous. This is much more like user friendly. All right. And all that is mounted to the car. And... Yeah. So just a standard uh, tow hitch to mount it on the back of the car. Okay. And then you have some stabilization up there. Uh, what's in the trunk? Well, so we've got a big beefy air compressor got a 10 gallon air tank, which is feeding air into this Bimba air controller, which is giving me these two lines, which in turn run the piston. And that gives you with that controller, pretty precise control. Very precise control. Good yeah. enough for filming shots and get a smooth shot. You can move it as fast and up and down yeah. as you want. And yep. plenty of air to, to run a lot of oh, shots. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, you know, we've been, on the last episode, we were using this pretty uh, consistently and Air compressor kicks on when the tank gets a little low. All right, so let me show you how we control the lift. So your front passenger has all control for the camera. Uh, right here, I've got the control for the air system. This controls all the up and down movement. So if we just roll onto it like a gas pedal here, you can hear the air feeding into the system then the camera lifts up. And then you can watch all of that on a monitor. You have a yeah. full computer monitor there. Yeah, so we've got a little TV here. So I've got an SDI feed into my center console where I have a Blackmagic 4K SDI to HDMI converter running this monitor here. And then that three axis gimbal, the Ronin, is yeah. just controlled with so transmitter. We've, yeah, so we've got the Ronin control here. So I've got full pan and tilt and roll control. So you've got one operator controlling the whole thing. Well, Actually. Scott, this is an amazing project. I'd love to get a demo. Can we shoot with this today? Yeah, definitely. Uh, awesome. Here, hop in. Why don't you operate the camera and I'll drive. All right, wow. Yeah. It's a command center. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I've got the, the cop console here. We kind of buried a little bit because we're in a cop car. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a this is a cop car. Um, Mythbusters actually bought this car from a police auction to use on an episode. So clearly a two-person operation. That was the goal uh, with the whole project. Because normally these kinds of things are six-man crew. What are the different cameras you use? Well, so for the final episode of Mythbusters, uh, we were using the Sony FS700. Um, and I had that running from the, the lift back to, uh, I had the Odyssey 7Q here and I was recording uh, continuous high speed, 200 frames a second, the entire run. It's probably, it's the longest high speed shot I've ever, I've ever done. Uh, That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, right now it's almost like the most advanced backup cam in the world right now. Yeah, 4K, it is. 200 <laughs> FPS. Well, we have another one of your friends from the Mythbusters production crew here to help us give a demo. I'd love to be able to shoot a piece of action. Yeah, let's do it. I won't wave you into a semi truck, let's just say that. Hey, so, Will. Hey, how's it going? Will, thanks for coming out. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, I was thinking what we'd do is start nice and close like this with the camera really low. So right now, if you look at the shot, it's like real big and fat on this tire in the back and then we'll have Will go at the same speed and we'll give him the signal and we're gonna pull away and as we pull away, you can lift up. Lift up and then maybe Will come up the side and turn to, turn to follow him a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So when you guys are planning a shot for Mythbusters, you do like a more detailed version of this, right? You block out every single shot. It's... Depends on what, <laughs> depends on what, what it, is. it is. Yeah, uh, maybe... No, it's about, about as detailed as we get. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, normally it's more cameras than just the one. Uh, if we were doing this for Mythbusters, we'd probably have about, you know, a few GoPros on Will here. And then uh, that might be, you know, we'd have this going and then a couple cameras like staged around to get everything all in the one take. I think I got this wrapped in my head. Uh, let's get in the car and hopefully get the shot. I, I would put him like right here. Got a little bit of a dip here, that's gonna get spooky. Yeah. Yeah. Nice low car for parking lots. And I'd pan a little to the right and go ahead and go up. Scott, that was awesome. Hey, nice shot, man. Wow, it was so much fun, and it totally gives me a whole new appreciation for the work you guys do and have oh. done on the show. Uh, an incredible rig. What are your plans for it next? Uh, I don't know, to be determined. Uh, with Mythbusters done, we'll, we'll see uh, how, we can, how we can use it. I'm glad you had the opportunity to experiment with some, some gear, with something directly from the show. Scott, thank you so much. Norm, well, thanks. Well, thanks, great Pleasure. action there. And we'll have more stuff on tested next time. See ya.